With the TV, Wi-Fi Ranger, Roku, and fan running, the battery was drained in a little over four hours. Now, I'm guessing I was only at about 80%. It might have been five hours. I did fall asleep. I was awake at the four hour point, and then I fell asleep, so I don't know exactly where it shut off, so I'm just saying what if it felt shut off right after I went to sleep. So we'll just say four hours. It might have done a little better. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick amp test. Right now, solar is putting out one amp. I got just this camping blanket I'm gonna throw right over the solar panel. Zero amps coming in from solar. So I'm gonna disconnect shore power and I have a, a multimeter connected up front here to see what am I drawing. If I was at 80%, that means I was using 200 watts of power that entire time. So that would be interesting to know how many amps am I drawing. So now, as far as I know, everything is off except for that, which you can't turn off all the way, the stereo. The only things left connected right now are the charge controller, and if no solar is coming in, the charge controller is consuming power. So that's energy there. And the stereo. The stereo is still in sleep mode. Everything else is turned off as much as you can get it. So basically, the camper takes, just sitting there, three amps. Now let's go start turning things on. Let's see what this takes. That is my cell phone booster right up there. Basically we jump from three to nine, so it takes 0.6 amps. It takes 600 milliamps. Let's turn this off. Let's turn on one light. One light takes about 400 milliamps or 0.4. So roughly 4.8 watts. So let's see if we turn all the lights on, if we see this number jump accordingly. All right, I got all nine of these lights on. We want to subtract three amps from that amount. So we'll say 2.5 amps times 12 volts. It's roughly 30 watts. So 30 divided by nine is 3.3. It appears to be using a little less now. So for whatever reason, combined, they take a little bit less power. It could just be that it's just more accurate as you average it out. But if you say 4.8 watts, you should be safe. Let's turn on the bathroom fan. Bathroom fan is on low. Let's say 0.15 amps for the fan. So 1.8 watts on low. All right, now the fan is high. Wow, look at that. That actually takes quite a bit. Look at that fan. That fan is basically taking almost 2.3 on high. So that fan takes almost 27 watts on high. Remember, subtract 0.3 from this number because everything off on the camper that you can turn off is about 0.3. Let's turn that off. Let's turn the oven fan on. The oven fan is basically about 1.3 amps, about 15.6 watts. Now let's just say you're running the oven fan and light. So adding that light basically added almost another amp. So almost another 12 watts. Yeah, you're looking almost 30 watts if you run the fan and the light at the same time. I don't have water in here, so I don't wanna run it very long, but let's see what the water pump takes. The water pump takes about one to 1.1 amps. So basically, well, and then it just went up a little. Safe to say it's about 13 watts to run the water pump. Let's turn the antenna on. See what that takes, just the antenna. Not bad, basically 100 milliamps, roughly. Maybe even less. So very little for the antenna, 1.2 watts. So now let's just turn this TV on. All right, TV's on. Let's see where we're at. So yeah, that's uh, TV's using 2.2 amps. Remember, subtract 0.3, so roughly, 
and so that TV is using about uh, 24 watts. With the Roku, with the TV on, we're looking at 2.3 amps with both running. You're using roughly about 2.4 watts for the Roku. So this is the radio at volume six. I'm not gonna blare it, but it obviously will consume more power as you turn it up, but let's just see what it goes to. So the radio basically uses 300 milliamps. Well, two to 300 milliamps. You could probably say 250 milliamps, roughly. So 2.4 to 3.6 watts. Probably if you had it cranked, it would probably be closer to the 3.6 watts. So that kind of gives you a baseline, at least for the radio. Again, I'm not gonna crank the radio, but that gives you some idea. Let's turn the Wi-Fi Ranger on and let's see how much power the Wi-Fi Ranger takes. All right, so it looks like the Wi-Fi Ranger basically uses 100 milliamps roughly. So basically around one to 1.2 watts. And you see it's fluctuating. A Couple more DC tests to go. We've got the heater. So let's just see what the fan takes. So basically you're gonna say 2.7, 2.8 amps. So with that fan, whoa, look at this. Well, that was just the igniter. So basically, the igniter kicks on. It's basically using 3.4 amps when the igniter kicks on. Remember, subtract three. Now, let's check the awning. So the awning is using roughly 0.9 amps. So there you go, basically about 12 watts. The porch light is using about 300 milliamps, 0.3. All right, so the last light, but mine is gonna be different than anybody else's, is the docking lights. So the issue with mine is it's not just that light. I also have it powering lights that I put here in the basement area. So mine is not gonna be the same as yours. Basically 1.3 to 1.4. So we'll just say, you're gonna be less than 1.3, that is for sure, because you aren't gonna have lights inside. So we're looking at uh, probably somewhere around 10 watts would be my guess for the normal user. So now let's turn the inverter on and see how much power the refrigerator takes when it's running on the inverter. So I'll turn the inverter on, but make sure all AC stuff is unplugged. We'll unplug this whole thing. see how much the inverter draws. So the inverter consumes just for itself basically two amps. So you're going to consume roughly 24 watts of power just to turn the inverter on. Now let's see how much power the refrigerator takes when it's running on the inverter. So all you do to run the refrigerator off DC voltage is just turn it on make sure auto mode is on if your inverter is on it's going to be running off your battery Wow 17 amps So there goes a lot of your power right there. So how did these numbers do we know we've got 17 amps to run the refrigerator That means the refrigerator when you're running off the inverter is 204 watts I was running that with my test last night that I got three hours, okay? So we know that it's a 100 amp hour battery at 12 volts, so basically 1.2 kilowatts, okay? 1200 watts. So I'm rounding, just for easy math, we got about 25 watts for the fan on high in the bathroom. We got 25 watts for the furnace. Now, of course, that's not going to be kicking on all the time, but in this case, it was. I set the temperature up high, there was no gas, it was kicking on. Roughly all the exterior lights was a 25, over 25 watts. 200 watts for refrigerator. Then I had the TV, the Roku, the Wi-Fi Ranger, the 4G cell phone booster. I had all the interior lights on, including my LED strip. I had the AC fan running on high, Amazon Alexa was plugged in, 
my video camera for monitoring the pets was also plugged in, all running off the inverter, okay? All of them together, I spent, with everything running, 400 watts. The battery did last for three hours, a little more. So I got my 1200 watts out of that battery in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was impressive. Now supposedly, you know, it's designed to go that low. And it turns off, you won't hurt the battery. My solar charge controller will feed a voltage even if the battery's as low as nine volts. So in any case, it's able to charge these batteries even if they go to their cutoff point. But again, I have the upgraded pulse width modulation charge controller in my Geo. What did I use last night? I only charged the battery roughly over two hours. It did run the fan for four hours. It did run the TV and the Roku for four hours. And it ran my LED light strip for one hour before it turned off. A little more. But we'll just say four because I fell asleep before I realized. But it, it shut off shortly after I fell asleep. Let's see how it charges today on the solar and see if we can get that battery back to 100%. It should be able to get a full charge because it is plugged in to shore power and it has solar. I am, however, going to keep both batteries. It was just in this little test of just the TV and the lights that I did last night. If the battery didn't get charged up all the way for whatever reason, then I'm depleting it all the way down. So if I put the hole as close to possible to the batteries right here and come up, I know I'll clear the tank. Now I gotta just make sure I'll clear any beams and stuff underneath. So let's measure that. Now we'll just put it right there at the corner of the battery. 